decided to make ravioli today. I haven't made ravioli in ages. But I've got all this flour and I picked up some more eggs. So, you've already seen how I make my dough. I did change up the ratio a bit and I think I'm happier with this. I'll know better once I put it through the press. Now, that's my standard ravioli maker that I've always used. And it's old. I think I paid for There's a price tag of $14.95 on that. I think there's a whole lot more these days. But I found this one at the thrift store. And it looks very interesting to me because it's, uh, rather than the roller, which I, rather than the roller, which I will probably still use. Sorry, the roller's there. Um, this one seems to be a two-piece system that presses out the little divots there and this I used to seem to have to press them out by hand so that may be a better system anyway it hasn't been opened I'm going to check open it up wash it check the instructions and then I'm going to attempt to use this one okay and while my dough is resting I'm going to go through the ingredients for the for today I'm going to make a butternut squash and spinach now, for all you garden lovers that like to grow your own things, the butternut squash is from my garden, the spinach has been uh, grown in my garden, then dehydrated and then turned into a powder. I do have frozen spinach as well, but I think I'm going to use the powder. And other than that, Parmesan cheese, unfortunately, I do not know how, nor do I have the facilities to make my own Parmesan cheese, so I buy that and grate it myself. I buy a block because that's the freshest way to get it. Other than that, salt and pepper. Anyway, each one of those pint jars held approximately a cup of butternut squash, so if you were to smash this in, that's all you would get from each one. So this is two cups of butternut squash, approximately half... I'm going to smash this up a bit first before we go any further. Okay, and to that we'll add approximately half a cup of Parmesan cheese. One tablespoon of spinach of this kind of spinach now. That is equivalent to a fair bit more than that. So, it's a lot of spinach actually. And, a teaspoon of salt and just a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay, so that's all my ingredients for the filling. Now I'll just mix this up really well. And meanwhile, my dough has been resting. Okay, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Okay, my filling has been pretty much thoroughly mixed up. And, I mean, there are some small chunks of... Uh, butternut squash, but that won't hurt anything. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator until my dough's ready. Okay, so I've rolled out one sheet of test dough here, and it's at the second tightest setting. The, the one that makes it even finer than that I wouldn't use unless I was going to roll the dough. Now, you do want to have it floured on the one side, and you want it stickyish on the other. So just slight flouring, not much. Now this one isn't long enough to double up, so I'm going to short it so I could use the one and use this new tool. I think that's the way it's supposed to work. Yep, got lovely divots there. And I'm going to... That one, oh well, might, be, might lose a little bit on that one. And now I'm going to scoop some filling into each of divots. Mm -hmm.
poke. And for those who have made this before, you want to moisten the other side, either with water, egg wash, milk, whatever is your preference. I'm just using water here. And that will help this one to adhere to that layer. And I'm just going to use a chopstick to help me fold this over here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this one here is a bit short. thought that might happen. But perhaps I can patch it up. Let's see. Okay. So now is when you use your rolling pin. to help form the little pockets here. Yes, I know it's a bit of work, but it is really awesome food. <laughs> okay, and what you do at this point is just tear away the excess. and you can reuse this back in the next one and I would use it immediately so it doesn't dry out if you're going to use it at all. Okay. Of course, the next stage is to flip this over. You're a little bit better than what I did. Okay, but there we go, perfect little pockets. Okay, what I also do is I have this little pastry wheel and I make sure I separate these now because it might be a little more difficult to separate them later. Yeah these pockets seem a little more filled than when I use my other ravioli um, maker. Okay there we have it. These ones are done and what I will do obviously freeze them and once they're frozen they actually can be put either in a vacuum seal no probably just a ziploc bag so I'm gonna make as many of these as I can how many per meal one two three. that could hmm, you probably want about eight eight per person Okay, here we go again. This time I've just cut single sheets, placing it evenly on this tray. Placing it evenly on this tray. Use my fork. I have another fork. Down here. You got it. See, the fork's nice little bit on the other side. Thank you. 
Okay, this batch is ready to go in my freezer. And so the leftover dough got processed into little spaghetti balls. <laughs> so this is at least two meals.